Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be looking at a very, very highly requested topic and that is how I became a body piercer. So I'm just going to tell you my experience of how I got into the industry. Also I'd just like to put it out there that it's very different worldwide for how people can become piercers. That's due to like the regulations and the training that has to be done in certain countries. So I can't say this would be the same for your country, but it could give you a good indication of like how you could go about doing it. Or if you just wanna know how body piercers become body piercers, this gives you a little bit of insight. I knew for a really long time that I wanted to become a piercer. So I was always really interested in piercings and body jewelry. I guess I had like a little bit of knowledge, nowhere near like what <laughs> you need as a piercer. I knew a little bit about like gay and lengths of jewelry purely out of the fact that like I'd had quite a lot of piercings and I downsized like my own piercings and I'd like done my own research I had a very like low level of knowledge just from what I'd gathered myself by no means am I saying that's enough because you get a lot of people coming in thinking they know a lot because they've had piercings and like that just isn't the case there's just so much knowledge to learn before you even pick up a needle that you couldn't possibly know like outside of learning in a piercing studio. You just don't know before you get in there and someone professional starts training you. So basically I applied for like traineeships and that sort of thing for years and years and years and I didn't hear back like ever. And I could never work out why because I was like, how are these people getting in there if like someone isn't giving them the opportunity? It's the same with like so many like jobs and career paths. How can you possibly get the experience if someone doesn't take you on and teach you? That's what I was finding really difficult for ages. And I just kept going on that path of like, applying and not hearing back. Then I had a friend who I hadn't seen for a few years and she had become a piercer in this time. I pretty much just asked her, I'm like, how did you like get in? And she told me that she did an infection control course before like applying and that sort of thing. She sent me all the details of like the course and where I could apply for it. I applied for this course. So you learn all about infection control if it isn't completely obvious. Tattoo artists also have to do this as well, at least where I'm from they do. So basically you're learning about infectious diseases, bloodborne pathogens, how to keep a sterile environment. You learn proper hand washing techniques, how to properly sterilize your tools, how to use an autoclave, how to, how to, like it's a whole bunch of things. So overall it's basically how to keep you and your client safe and free of infections and diseases. It's basically theory, but there's also prac along the way so that you can prove that you can perform the particular like cleaning techniques and that you know how to use an autoclave and that you understand cross-contamination and how like diseases and that sort of things can be transmitted through body piercing. Once I had that, then I started reapplying for traineeships so that I could get someone to train me. So after you've done that infection control certificate, you don't know how to pierce, although infection control is a super, super, super important part of body piercing. Like you, you have to know how to do that. Otherwise, like that's when things can get dodgy. That's why it concerns me like everywhere in the world. I don't know if everywhere has like these procedures in place. Whereas like if you're in Australia, it's such a very important part of being a body piercer or a tattoo artist so that things are being done sterile and extremely safely. It's so important. After that, I started applying at a whole bunch of places and that's when I started hearing back from places because I had that already. So that meant that they didn't have to wait for that part of the training to be completed. In Australia, we don't have apprenticeships for piercing. We have apprenticeships for tattooing. Piercing's a little bit different. You definitely have to go through extensive training. I got taken on, I can't even remember the beginning. It was a lot of theory at the beginning. I had to learn all about the jewelry, the sizes, the styles, the types, the metals, everything you could possibly imagine. You have to learn so much at the beginning because if you're doing it wrong or you're piercing someone with the wrong type of jewelry or the wrong size of jewelry, basically the whole piercing can just like go so, so very wrong. Obviously after that, I had to learn all about the tools. Aftercare is another huge part of it that you need to learn. And even though I'd already like done a course in like infection control and cleaning and sterilization and all that sort of stuff, I had to make sure I was equipped with that in that particular studio. So like you're learning all that to begin with before you're even piercing. Once again, this safety and the sterilization behind everything is so important before you're even going into doing a piercing. So that's something to take in is that you need to learn all that stuff before you're even piercing. Like you don't just get in there and it's like, 
we're doing a piercing immediately. But I feel like it's like that with anything. There's like a lot of theory involved before you can actually get into it. So in the meantime of like doing all that in the studio, I was also watching every single piercing that was coming in. And it was really good because I started at a really busy studio. So I saw so many piercings. I just get to watch piercing after piercing for a very long time I was watching piercings. Every single person had to approve that they were happy for someone to watch over because like obviously, if they didn't want that, they didn't have to have someone there. But anything that like exposed someone's body, so like nipples, navels, people are very uncomfortable with showing that, which it is totally understandable. I'm so appreciative of all the people who let me watch while someone, there was already someone else piercing them. So they had two people seeing their body, which like, again, like I've said before, the body is just the body, like whatever, no one cares. It's just what we all have, but it's definitely like an uncomfortable thing to like have a few people watch while you're just like, oh, I was hoping there would just be like the one person that I didn't even want them to have to see it. So like, it's totally understandable, but I'm very glad that people let me watch that so I could see the technique. That was like some time of just watching. And then after all that, it was time to actually perform the damn piercings. So this may be terrifying for some people, but uh, it's just how it is in Australia anyway. I can't say what happens for the rest of the world, but basically in Australia, you don't learn on like dummies or something like that. Like I don't know a piercer here anyway that has learnt on like a dummy or a fake ear or like fake body, whatever. I don't know anyone who's done that. It sounds terrifying and <laughs> Oh, it is. We have to learn on an actual person, an actual human. And that's what people need to understand that like, think about tattooing. Yes, they can tattoo on a fruit or a fake skin, but that does not compare to like what real skin like moves and feels and like performs like. So always your best thing is to do it on an actual person. And that's why when you're getting a tattoo by an apprentice, you pay less. The same goes for a body piercer. So anytime we were doing training, people would get like a discounted piercing. And also the people would always know that you were in training. You had to tell them. You always had to ask. And you'd have to say like, I feel very confident in doing this piercing. I've seen like a million of them or I've done this many of them at this point. They'd either say that they were fine with it or they weren't. And they were paying less to get like a trainee to pierce them as well. The only thing that sucked with that was the fact that you didn't get to do every piercing every day. The things that were super common that you'd, you'd done like a million of them like within the first few days were like a helix, nose, navel, nipples. They were super, super common. You would never be piercing someone who didn't agree to be pierced by a trainee because that would just be plain wrong. The piercer or even the studio, someone should be giving you full disclosure that you were getting pierced by a trainee because if you're not comfortable with that, you shouldn't have to get pierced by them. And you should also be getting a discount as well because that's not right to be paying the full price for someone who has a lot of experience as opposed to someone who doesn't. Sorry if that's a shock to a lot of people and they didn't expect that that's how it happens. I know that in America, it's definitely apprenticeships that you have to go through to become a piercer. That's just not the case here in Australia. You couldn't even get a piercing apprenticeship if you wanted one because they, they don't exist here. Like there is no such thing as a piercing apprenticeship here. Like we just, we don't have them. And then after that, like you do, you do a lot, a lot, a lot of training. You have someone in there watching your piercings for a very long time. Basically, instead of having the apprenticeship and like finishing off and being signed off, it is up to like a few piercers like judge you. And if they are all happy that like you're up to standard and they feel that you're like completely confident with every single piercing, that's when you are qualified, which may sound insane. Most of the time, those people have had like 10 plus years experience as a piercer to be able to like sign you off. You would never get trained by someone who's been piercing for like a year or two years. They would never put someone in there who hasn't been piercing for long enough. They basically just don't have that really long-term experience of like basically whatever could go wrong because they have experienced so many things. They also need to make sure that you're confident and capable of taking on any type of client as well. Just because the amount of different people you get in there 
you have to be prepared for literally anything. There's been a lot of people that I've seen who have gone through the training to become piercers. They just don't make it through because they don't have either the confidence or they try to pierce and it freaks them out or they can't stand up for themselves or they can't stand up for like the studio and the safety of everyone and everything. You definitely have to be a certain type of person to become a piercer. It's not just all like, rainbows and daisies and beautiful times. The first few years you learn so much because you're learning a lot about the different ways the body can react to piercings, the different jewelry, the different things people can do to their piercings that screw them up, the different infections you'll see, the different lumps and bumps. You have to learn all of this stuff in order to also help people who come in and a piercing's been messed up at another studio and they've come in here for you to solve the problem. It's a very like, fast paced and high volume environment. There's a lot of people wanting to get pierced. I would not recommend doing this if you have anxiety or get stressed very easily because you're around stressed people all day. That would probably just like unload onto you and it wouldn't feel good. But other than that, it, it is a really enjoyable job. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like down below and please subscribe to my channel and I will be back very soon.